pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to understand our purpose in life. You would help us to understand the focus of you, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Today's passage in many ways reminds me of how sometimes we will paint people into the corner just to make sure that we get our way. And so what James and John does there is they sort of put Jesus at an imposition where he finds it difficult to say no, but Jesus in a natural way is able to overcome that. My brother, when he was little, he was in about grade one, did something very similar to my mother. And he sneaked out of the house and we sort of lived quite much in our own house and in our neighbor's house and we sort of both lived into each other's homes and my mother never thought anything when my brother walked down the driveway and disappeared around the corner she did think that he was being a little bit sort of quiet in it but half an hour later my brother came running back screaming remembering those days corporal punishment was not frowned upon as it is today and he came running in and he said to my mother hit me hit me hit me and my mother said, I can't just hit you. What's wrong? He said, no, hit me, hit me, hit me. My mother then thought she better oblige and she gave him a hiding. And he then turned around and he said, I set the felt on fire. <laughs> and in his grade one logic, what he had thought of doing was, as long as he got the hiding first, it wouldn't be as bad as what if he did it second. <laughs> and I suppose in many ways, that's what James and John are doing the same. They're trying to actually put themselves in the position of authority. But that's not unique. That is pretty much what happens in the world today. We'll do anything to be number one. We will make sure that we get to that position whichever way is possible. We will call in all our favors. We will... Um, we will even go to the position of corruption or actually paying somebody off. We will make sure that all the good factors and all the good points are out there in your face. But we will also hide all those mistakes that we may have made. And that is nothing that is not unique. That is something very obvious in our life. And so we try our utmost best to get to that number one position. But the other ten are not any better. As soon as they hear it, their first immediate reaction is, how can you do this? But in actual fact, most probably deep down inside of them, they were actually saying, damn, why didn't I think of it? Why didn't I come up with that idea? And so what sets in is jealousy. They become jealous of James and John. And they think, how can these two guys get this right? I'm better than them. I deserve the place more than they do. How can they come along and get this position? And so in many ways, what we start seeing is jealousy setting in. And so today I want to look at today's sermon and I want to title it, Keep in Your Lane. That's the sermon for today. Each of us on a day-to-day -day basis is running a race. And that race is called life. And we're on that track and we're running that race and each day we have small victories. Other days we have big victories. But at the end of the day, the race, life, is one big, long race. And we need to run it. And to be able to run that race, we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Look ahead, see Jesus, and run according to what He wants us to run at. I know I didn't do much running. I don't run. I swear. But in running and swimming, you have the same thing, and that is you have to stay in your own lane. 
The quickest way to be disqualified is to go into your opposition's lane, the person on the left or the person on the right. And sometimes we're so busy running or swimming that we're so busy looking to behind us to the left and to the right that we go into those people's lanes. And that is a problem which we need to really be very careful about. But a little interlude before we go any further. I don't enjoy exercise. Let me be honest with you. And when I do it, I only do it in water. I don't do it on land. I don't run and I don't even like walking. I don't like getting sweaty. In water, I can hide the sweat by the water. Many of you might think, Grant, you are seriously mad. It's the last place you want to do any exercise. And so when I get to the pool and I do water aerobics, what I do is I look to the left and I look to the right and I look at the one person I think I can beat. Normally they're not the fittest person in the class. It's normally somebody that I look at and I think, ha, I've got your number. And when we start exercising, what I do is I run faster than what they do. I'll pull harder than they do. If we're doing push-ups, I'll do an extra two push-ups just because I can beat that person. When the instructor says, okay, you can stop, I'll do two more exercises just so that I'm that one place ahead of them. I want to beat them. That's the way I motivate myself. But remember, exercise was not something that God created. He never intended us to do exercise. You now might think, well, okay, Grant, now where do you get that biblically? Simple. Genesis. Hello? There was Jesus, or there was God, creating Adam and Eve. And what does it say in the Bible? They were naked and they walked around unashamed. In other words, Adam did not have a one-pack. He definitely had a six-pack. And Eve had zero fat content. Okay. They were unashamed. I mean, when else would we want to be looking like that? I'm not encouraging you to go out if you're looking like that, naked. And so, and so the apple was the first cholesterol. The first form of the end of the slippery slope. But if you look at me, you realize I seriously need exercise. Because I am overweight and I have one downfall in life. I love my food. And so I have to exercise. I don't have choice. Life is a race. But who are we racing? Are we racing ourselves or are we racing those on either side of us? Are we racing the person on the left or the right? Or are we racing ourselves? We must stay in our own lane and keep our eyes on Jesus. Running a race, comparing ourselves to others can be very dangerous. Because you're so busy looking to the left and to the right, you stumble over your own feet and you fall down. But what actually starts happening is you start stagnating and actually going backwards. You actually start finding that instead of going forwards, you're starting to slide backwards. The comparison will continue to cloud God's calling on our life. And yes, there is a calling on each one of our lives. Remember that a, your career is what you get paid for. A calling is what you are meant to do. And some of us are fortunate enough to be able to combine those two. The calling and the career. So to get paid for what you are meant to do. We have to stop complaining about the pieces that we don't have and realize that we are a masterpiece. 
So often what happens is you sit around and you look around and you sit there and you think, oh, if I only had a beautiful voice that I could sing in the choir like my wife Anne does. Instead of realizing that I've been gifted with a voice that I can preach with. Or you sit there and you say, if I could only pray like so and so. And yet you've been given the gift of being able to work amongst others. We're so busy looking at what others have that we don't see what we have. Remembering that God created you as a masterpiece. He doesn't make mistakes. He, you are exactly as He wants you to be. There is nothing that needs to be changed. You are exactly as He wants you to be. In actual fact, we should come to church with these velvet ropes and we should put those velvet ropes around us and we should stand and we say, I am a masterpiece. I am better than the greatest Rembrandt, the best Picasso, because God, the Creator, created me. And that's important for us to remember. We must stop complaining and start realizing the masterpiece. And so we need to run our race. We need to stay in our lane and keep our eyes focused on Jesus. My favorite one is those of you that drive. You know, you land up in a traffic jam. And inevitably what you do is you look to the left and you look to the right. And the lane on the right or the lane on the left is always moving faster than you. And so what you do is you, you practically cause an accident just to get into that lane. And inevitably, as soon as you get into the lane, the lane that you were in is the one that starts moving faster. And that is so true of what it's all about. So too with God, we are to stay in our own lane. Each lane has two lines, one on the left and one on the right. And those two lines are destiny, two different destinies. The one we each, we try and do each day. Some of us more successful than others. But we are almost determined as Christians to do that. That lane is every day to live our life as close to Jesus as possible. So that line is how can we become closer, more like Jesus? You remember those old bangles, WWJD, what would Jesus do? We try to live our life like that. The other lane, or the other line, is the one we don't do that well. That line is what we call unique. That line is to try and live your life more like yourself. Like you've been created to live that life. More as an individual. Not like any other person. Not in comparison, but in comparison to what God has created you to do. And that is important. Remembering that we are not like anybody else. That when God created us, He broke the mold. Not because He made a mistake. Not because you were a flaw, but because you were perfect. And He didn't need to make a carbon copy. He needed to create another masterpiece. And that's important. We also need to remember that we represent God in our lives as we live every day. And so, how we live our life, if we're a teacher, we are to teach the way God wants us to teach. If we are a doctor or a medical practitioner, we are to be a medical practitioner the way God wants us to be a medical practitioner. If we're a technician, we are to be a technician the way God wants us to be a technician. 
If we are a scholar, we need to be a scholar the way God wants us to be a scholar. We are to live as God wants us on earth. We are, remember those two lanes, every day be closer to what Jesus wants from us and every day be closer so that we are more unique than ever before. And unlike those lanes that we run, which are parallel lines, those two lines will slowly converge to a point where we will walk down the central line in the light of Christ. Because our uniqueness and what Jesus and living the way Jesus is will be one line. We'll still have the lane, but we'll be walking on those lines, those two distinctions. This brings me to my favorite one. The favorite one is, and I'm sure in each one of us, there are those people. But you also know many of these people. That's the but me people. You might think, who are the but me people? So you'll phone a person and you'll say to them, you'll never guess, I've just got a promotion at work. And they'll go, oh, that's great, but but me, I've been looking for a promotion for two years and I still haven't got it. What about me? Or the other one of, you'll phone them and you'll say to them, I passed that exam that I really was look so petrified of. And they'll go, oh, but me, I should have got a 60 and I only got a 59. How unfair is that? Those are the but me's. And I'm sure you know them and you're looking around. The problem with the but me's is, is that in actual fact, they put shades over your eyes and they blur so you aren't able to see what Jesus wants of you. Your eyes are off Jesus and they are focused on you. Moi, me, number one. Everything is about me, about my problem and how I need to be. But don't worry, there's also the but me churches. And I'm guilty of it, I know. You know, on Thursday we met here at Elam, all the ministers from the campus all met together. And one of the first things they go, so how's your ministry doing? And you sort of want to stand up and say, oh great, out of 150, 220 people in church and 30 rats. You know, we, we, we'll include whatever we can. And those people that just happened to walk outside the church while the church was, they actually were in church because the Holy Spirit went out and touched them. We're very good at that. We're very good at, at looking around and going, oh, but if I only could have the thousand people the church down the road has, what are we doing wrong here? Instead of looking and seeing what the purpose of what Jesus is, we're so busy looking at our left to our right that we take our eyes off Jesus. We lose focus on what we are supposed to be doing. We don't see what God is calling us to do. And that's important. We need to see what God is calling us to do. My greatest one, but me, is super nervous along the way. It's something that has sort of got a turbo blast in the last couple of years. Many of you don't remember prior to this. Saw a picture today of a guy with a video camera and a, t and a camera with a, with a tripod and, and an iPhone and a, and a, a, a sound system and everything else he said this was 20 years ago today we fit all of this in our pockets that's our cell phones with our cell phones come social media and every time we get onto social media what do we do we look at those friends of ours and we get those but me's you know you because on social media you never paste anything ne negative it's always the good points so unfair that person's gone on holiday again 
that they were just went on holiday like a month ago. Now they're again on holiday. How unfair is that? We don't realize that for that holiday, they've just remortgaged their own house. They wouldn't tell you that. But what this has done has become, you know, like the Snow White story where the evil witch would stand there and go, mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me who the fairest of them all. But instead, what we do is we stand and we look at our phone and we say, mirror, mirror on Facebook, tell me how my life should look. <laughs> or mirror, mirror on Instagram, tell me how I can be prettier than I am. But what should our lives look like? If instead of reflecting totally all our time on social media, we turn to the Word of God and we reflect it just a little bit on the Word of God. Instead of every half an hour looking at our phone, only looking at our phone once an hour, and the other time looking at the Bible app and reading something in the Bible app. Instead of focusing on what others are doing, focusing on what God wants us to do by keeping our eyes on Jesus, staying in our lane and focusing on Jesus, not looking to the left and not looking to the right. Today's sermon, I know, touched a number of people's lives, but in many ways I'm preaching it from my point of view. I've been there, I've done that, and I do it on a regular basis. I remember December this year I got a letter, or December last year I got a letter, and the letter said, appointment to St. Wilfred's, and the first thing is, I can't do that, I'm not good enough, I'll never match up to any of the past priests, they were legends, let alone the priest that was here before me, I'll slip up, I'll make a mistake. I can't be them. I was so concerned about by looking to the left and looking to the right that I started tripping over my own feet. And I had to make a conscious decision that instead of looking to the left and looking to the right, I needed to look inside of me and see what my uniqueness was what my masterpiece was and instead of trying to be more like anybody previously hell guys selby taylor was here i needed to actually look at what god had created me to do and by running my race in my own lane looking at Jesus Christ not looking to the left not looking to the right I was a I am able to know that this is not a daunting task it's not about me it's not because I'm great I am I'm a masterpiece but it's because God has created me to be who I am and if I look at what I have to offer that is what I can give. And so in conclusion, we need to run our race, the race of life, in our own lanes. Don't veer to the left, don't veer to the right. Don't look to the left and don't look to the right. Run your own race by focusing on Jesus. Give what God has given you and use it to the best of his ability. Amen.